Day three, PDAC 2023, and I'm with one of my favorite colleagues in the critical mineral sector. How are you today, Russell? I'm great, Tracy. Thank you for having me today. And so, Russell, I call you when I need to know what's really happening. So let's start with the Congo. What's happening? You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, it's a safe jurisdiction. <laughs> Some people, you know, what's happening with critical minerals in the DRC? Because it still seems to be one of the most used sources for actual critical minerals in the world? So people have this mistaken perception that all mines in the DRC use child labor or uh, pay unfairly and such. And that's actually a fallacy. And, and we're a perfect example. We've just started production in January this year of copper and we have no child labor. We know exactly who we hire. We have background checks and such. So we know what's going on. But if you take it from a, a macro basis, the government, the United States government, has entered in December of 2022 a memorandum of understanding between the U.S. and uh, the DRC in Zambia. And what's happening on the ground now is the DRC government is openly trying to attract Western capital to come in. They want a, a competition to the Asian investors that have been there for 20 years or so. And so what's happening is, is, is in fact, they're here at, the, uh, at PDEC talking to companies like ours and talking to new companies, saying, hey, we are open for business. Um, the the uh, noise from the past in terms of governance and labor and such, we are cleaning that all up. We, don't, we want our kids in the schools. We don't want them underground trying to mine. So there's been a sea change in terms of the investment philosophy and how the government looks at uh, Western capital. And I'm just going to put you on the spot. South Africa, critical minerals, give us an update. Well, there's a lot going on in South Africa in terms of critical minerals. The problem is, is there's a political infighting on who is going to lead that charge. Um, and I think you're going to see a cabinet reshuffle here in the next few weeks or so um, as the uh, budgets come out and as the ANC decides who they want to put into uh, their positions. It's well endowed with critical minerals. We've, we've looked at a couple acquisitions there. Um, there are smaller companies that are looking at uh, acquisitions there. Um, it's a place for us to invest, but Sub-Saharan Africa is actually where we're at. So again, this is, this is country number six on my trip. I started in Zimbabwe. I went to South Africa. I went to the Congo to look at our mine. I went to Rwanda, Tanzania, and uh, there is an absolute plethora of investment opportunities there for Western capital and for capital such as, as critical metals. I was just talking five minutes ago to a group of investors over here from London and I, I actually referenced you because you recently told me if you're in critical minerals you need to be in London and of course you're LSE listed. Would you like to comment on that? So there's a new uh, there's a new uh, sea change from the UK government. In fact, on the 28th of February, while I was traveling, I put in a submission to the UK Parliament about the critical metals uh, industry and what I believe they need to do in order to attract you know, the supplies coming out of the Congo or coming out of Zambia, coming out of South Africa and such. Um, my impression is, is they're, behind, they're behind Canada and the US in terms of that attraction. Um, so they are trying to uh, get supplies to companies like Rolls-Royce or British Aerospace in terms of what's required uh, for them to have proper output, aerospace, satellites, um, etc. And so they know that should China turn off that flow uh, that's, that they've been purchasing, they're going to have problems certainly from an economic viewpoint. And they're having struggles already in their economy. You know, Brexit has caused some problems and such. So I think what's happening is, is you're starting to see things siloize. So you're having Canada and the U.S. kind of team up as one silo, and I am seeing U.K. and E.U. team up as a second silo um, to try to capture those necessarily critical metals that they require to run their economies. Jack Lifton and I have been going back and forth about this trend we're seeing about large automotive companies actually looking at exploration companies. We asked Constantine Karanopoulos about this this morning, and now I'm asking you. So I'm actually seeing uh, increased interest from the automotive industry, but I'm seeing it via third-party traders. So if you think about the big traders, and I'll just throw some names out, if it's Glencore, if it's Traxxas, if it's Trafigura, if it's Gerald Metals, all the automotive um, uh, OEMs have come to them and said, look, we are in need of this. Please go find it for us. And what happens is, is they're happy to pay a slightly higher price to have that intermediary 
in order for the intermediary to come to companies like us and say, we will supply you with the Cobalt, and the Cobalt goes into a Mercedes-Benz or it goes into Ford or, or whatever. So absolutely seeing more of that type of, of growth from the Fords and from the Mercedes-Benz in particular uh, on the ground. So who are they hiring for brokers though, Russell? Where are they finding competent talent that can actually make these professional decisions? So I've heard rumblings that um, the OEM automobile manufacturers are actually sourcing directly from some of those companies that I mentioned earlier who are global metals traders. And they're gonna bring some, one of those or two of those people in house uh, to do the lies because they know A, the mining side, B, they know the trading side and how to price it, and C, they know, obviously know the logistics side, which is very important. If you think about how we would get our cobalt from uh, the Congo or our copper from the Congo into Mercedes-Benz plant or into a Ford or a Volkswagen plant, um, you know, those logistics are pretty uh, complicated. And so they've made decisions, some of them have made decisions to actually poach from a Trafigura or a Traxxas or even a Glencore to bring them in-house to help manage that supply chain. Well, as always, Russell, what a pleasure. Thank you very much, Tracy, for having me.